This month marks the 20th year that I've been involved with the dialogue and I think the dialogue has really proven itself to be the top uh, organization working on Latin American policy issues in the hemisphere. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Inter-American Dialogue's third annual Leadership for the Americas Awards Gala. Bienvenidos a lo que promete ser una noche para todos muy, pero muy especial. For 35 years, the Inter-American Dialogue has worked to shape the policy debate on critically important issues to nations in the Western Hemisphere. Its focus includes rule of law, education, energy, climate change, our relations with Asia, security, migration, development, and more. There is no better example of the dialogue's commitment to pluralism than tonight's five outstanding honorees. All have achieved excellence in their fields and in very different ways contributed enormously to the dialogue's mission. A business leader devoted to philanthropy and social responsibility in a troubled region. An investigative journalist and human rights advocate, fearless in her pursuit of the truth. A computer genius, inventor, innovator, and professor concerned about the common good. A diplomat, development specialist, and institution builder with a gift for bringing people together to advance a positive shared agenda and a former president, statesman, public intellectual, champion for democracy, and not least, a founding member and chair emeritus of the Inter-American Dialogue. Tonight, I have the great honor of introducing this year's Lifetime Achievement Awardee, a remarkable leader, thinker, and statesman, Fernando Enrique Cardoso. My connections with this institution go back into the past, and my admiration for it only grows with the passing of time. Our dialogue is well equipped to tackle these issues, mobilizing the most thoughtful and influential leaders in the hemisphere in the quest of our ideals. Gradually, we will see ever more clearly where today's world is moving to. Let us continue to dedicate ourselves to strength in the world of tomorrow, the actors and actions that we deem the best. In short, Bobby is a leader, a pioneer, a visionary, a champion for education, and a man of tremendous passion and integrity. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's recipient of the Inter-American Dialogue's Leadership for Civic Engagement Award is Roberto Murray Mesa. Bobby, please join me at the podium to receive your award. I would like to argue here tonight on the need to keep the dialogue robust. You can count on us in Latin America for keeping our part of the bargain. We will continue to engage political actors on key issues, and we will continue to help to put the limelight on these challenges. This is a historical moment for everybody who lives in the United States and in the Americas. This is all of us as citizens of the world and as citizens of this country and as citizens of the Americas saying we believe in dialogue. We may have difference of opinion, but we believe in dialogue. And to me, that is the core of what democracy is all about. I'm here to show that I believe in dialogue. So for all that you do with your heart and your brain, it is my honor to present to you, Luis, the Inter-American Dialogue Leadership Award for Innovation and Social Impact. Luis. It turns out there's 1.2 billion people in the world learning a foreign language. 
Now, this is a very interesting market. Two thirds of these people, 800 million, satisfy three properties. First of all, they're learning English. Second, the reason they're learning English is to get a job. And third, they are of low socioeconomic conditions. Okay, so most people that are learning a foreign language are basically trying to learn English in order to get out of poverty. So this is why um, I decided uh, with my co-founder to launch this thing called Duolingo, which we launched about five years ago, which is the idea is, is a completely free way to learn a language. We launched it about five years ago, and since then it has now become the most popular way to learn languages in the world. She has shown a light into some of the darkest corners of life in her home country and throughout the Americas, showing courage and speaking up for and defending human rights time and again. And she has taken that message and she's applied it around the world. Please join me in congratulating and welcoming Lydia Cacho for the leadership of the America's Award for the Defense of Human Rights. When I was a little girl, my mom kept telling me, my brothers and sisters, that everything that we question, we should investigate. And for everything that we investigated, we needed to find answers. And once we had the answer, we should always, always try to ask ourselves in front of the mirror, what can I do to change this? Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm so sorry I can't be there with you tonight, but I didn't want to miss this opportunity to help celebrate the remarkable achievements of my good friend, and he is my good friend, Luis Alberto Moreno. I've had an opportunity as a governor and senator to meet many ambassadors, but no one came to this city and made more connections and more friendships in a shorter period of time, at a time when his country was going through enormous challenges than Luis Alberto. So I cannot think of anyone that is a better recipient of the Distinguished Award for Social Equity than that force, uh, Luis Alberto Moreno. We in Latin America have a true opportunity to look more to ourselves. Because if anything, in these very confusing times that we live in, what we need is more dialogue across the Americas, more inter-American dialogue. Thank you very much.